Some people think that we'd be better off without CSS and to have a different solution or that it was just done wrong. You know, let's just start over because it sucks. But clearly they don't remember how bad things used to be. So today we're going to be looking at how we used to do things in the old days versus how we do them today. Hello my front end friends, thank you so much for coming back for yet another video and if you're new here, my name is Kevin and here at my channel I help you fall madly, deeply in love with CSS and I think one of the ways that we can appreciate CSS a little bit more is to realize how far it's actually come along and how, how amazing the modern solutions we have today actually are. So first, let's, let's jump right in here and just look at how we had to style text and we're going to be using the font tag for this because that is sort of how it was done. Uh, the font tag was introduced in HTML 3.2, and interestingly enough, um, three was never actually a thing, and part of the actual spec. Uh, you'll notice actually VS Code is gonna put a lot of these in this really dark brown color, just because they're deprecated, <laughs> um, but they will work. And so we get this the font tag here. Let, let's just style this up a little bit. Uh, we want a bigger font size, so you'd use your font tag, and then you could just come in here and say size is equal to and you put in how big you want. Let's say we want 32 pixels. There we go, we got a 32 pixels and let's say we want it to be a different font family. For the font family, they're font faces. So you'd actually put face here. So font, so you're really getting like font size, font face. So let's just put in um, cursive for the fun of it. There we go, we get a comic size coming through. And obviously this worked. Um, the problem with it is now if I want to style this one, I'd have to come and put my fonts on this p tag too and the next one and the next one and depending on what you're doing it could be annoying. Uh, it's a little bit like using span tags with inline CSS whereas we could just come in and you know do paragraph font size is 32 pixels or even better just a two rem on there and then also just give the font family a cursive and we're good to go and really interestingly actually even though I put a font size of 32 here um, it seems that the on my body when I did a font size of 1.5 rem that's actually changed what this is coming out to so it's actually coming out to 48 uh, so let's just come down here and say 48 so they end up being the same which would just be we can put that at 3 rem so they come out the same way um, but yeah, so you know, using the font thing like that was kind of annoying. We could do more font styling than just that. Let's turn word wrap on here. Um, so we have our font tag that's right there. And let's say inside here, I wanted some text to be a little bit bigger. Uh, we could, you know, take the font tag and then like use it like a span on a styling text, but I could actually come in here and use a big tag and then we could close. And you probably know the small tag because the small tag actually still exists but you can see that the big tag actually works there. Let's do it over two lines. And we could do that versus using a span with a class today. We won't go through the whole thing on that. And yeah, what I was going to say is the interesting thing with the font tag uh, is it came out with HTML 3.2, which came out a month after the first spec of CSS came out. Um, so we actually did get the style tag at the same time and we could do some you know styling up there and stuff like that. Uh, and it's when divs came out as well and stuff. So kind of interesting that the font tag came out along with the style tag, really interesting. I remember using this quite a bit. I don't know if I ever used the big tag though. Uh, it pretty much goes from like one font size larger. Um, Cause anyway, I won't get into it too much. It's, it's terrible, but and you can see they got rid of it because it's deprecated. So, you know, VS codes like don't use this. Um, all right, so next up we're gonna look at centering in the old days versus the new days. So down here I have some text and maybe we'll, we'll comment this out. Um, and you know what, we're gonna boost up the font size to make everything easier for you all to see. Let's make it three rams. We have nice big font size to work with. So now that the, we have the nice font size on there, uh, what we can do is in the old days of centering, there's a couple of things we're gonna look at. The first one was just using the center tag, which again is deprecated. So it's saying not to use it, but there we go. We can. Uh, center horizontally that way. Whereas obviously these days we could just use a nice simple center uh, new because that's the class name I used and just do a text align center. Uh, and we can center things vertically or horizontally that way. Uh, one reason that we, you know, the center tag we don't really want to use is, you know, worst case, you're just using something like a text center utility class. You can use it wherever you want without having to add a new tag every time you want centered text or you just you know, have other styling. I'd use this up in my header uh, as well, a text align center to center everything. Uh, now you could wrap more stuff. So let's just 
take this off for a second so that one's not centered I think we could actually do this and like say like this whole block over here is centered oh no that doesn't work so you couldn't even do that so that's kind of oh no work let's close that there there we go so yeah you could like wrap a big block in center if you needed a lot of things centered uh, I think I don't even know if that is like appropriate or not but obviously it works um, and interestingly one of the reasons that these are deprecated but they're still working is because browsers still need to be able to render pages that were built in like 1999 or whatever um, when you know the early early days when all of this old stuff was all we had the browser needs to be able to render it so we still a lot of deprecated tags uh, still function uh, we'll get to another deprecated tag when we get to the animations that actually does not work anymore. But uh, if we look at here, the centering, we're only looking at horizontal centering. Of course, there's vertical centering as well. So let's give my center old and my center new both a height um, just so we can. Uh, so we'll have that. Let's just say here center old and my center new. We'll give them a border so we can see them. Border two pixels solid black. All right, let's, yeah, we'll stick with black, that's fine. And let's give them a height of, I don't know, 400 pixels, just so we, uh, maybe 300. Let's try and keep them both on the screen. So when we wanted to center in the old days, what we would use is a table rather than using um, other ways, because tables were how we did all our layouts anyway. Uh, you can see that really mucks up and breaks stuff. So in here, let's do a TR with a TD, so a table row with tabular data inside of it. And then we can grab this and drop it right in there and like that it magically it is aligned that way of course my table width is off so we could say width is equal to 100 percent and then there we go that actually works now the markup that we had to have to do this is kind of annoying but hey it was vertically centered and it wasn't that hard to do to be honest uh luckily it's still not that hard to do today we, we ran into a world where it was difficult when we moved away from table-based layouts which was a good thing even if vertical centering was easy back then but now all we have to do uh, we can do a display flex or a display grid and then just it has to have a height obviously on there and then we just do an align uh, align items of center and it is centered of course if this was flex that would also work and yeah oh yeah it is centered but it's off to the left now because flex and grid are a little bit different but um, there we go we can see that that is working perfectly fine so yeah, centering in the old days versus now, I find it a lot easier doing it now. Um, if you want a whole bunch of other methods where you can center stuff, I'll link to a video down below where I look at modern ways of centering um, things on the page. Now let's jump into animations because animations in the old days versus animations today. Um, they were very limited in the old days what we could do, but there's of course the most famous possible animation um, I think or there's two uh, let's start with the deprecated one that does not work anymore And it was removed for, like it's the one of the only things I can think of that the browsers don't actually support um, Maybe there's other ones if you know any leave comments in the description uh, but it's our blink tag here and so using blink and can I make this so like B-L-I-N-K, I do apologize that it's so hard to read these. Um, but the blink tag uh, would make things blink. And of course that's really terrible and we generally don't wanna have blinking stuff on the page. So is, even if I do that, it no longer works. I remember using this back in the day, um, along with like my page counter. You know, it was a visit, we had GeoCities, their visitor counters and stuff, it was great. Um, but what we also had, which still works, even though it is also deprecated, is the marquee. And oh, look at that marquee's maybe not deprecated. I'm pretty sure it is though. Um, but look at that nice little animation going. And interestingly with the marquee, we actually got a fair bit of control with it. Uh, and we'll get into some other attributes that even with the font tag, I didn't look at. Um, we have like RBG color. I think we write it like that. Uh, let's try purple and hit save. There we go. We got a background on there. Now, interestingly, if I remember right, we can't put a color on here like that. But, uh, so that means we actually had to come in here and then add the font tag. Uh, so it's not letting me even, Emmett doesn't know what the font tag is. So font color is equal to white inside my marquee. Uh, but having the font tag in the marquee would of course work. And there we go, we get the white in there. Uh, there was other stuff you could do with marquee as well. Uh, so if you wanted the other direction, it was a nice easy attribute. Just direction is equal to. Uh, so if I do left, is it already going left? I guess so. I wasn't sure if it was where it starts from or where it's going. Direction right, then we get it moving toward the right. Uh, so there we go. We could do other stuff with it. 
Uh, you can control the speed of it. Uh, the speed thing, there's scroll amount is equal to, I'm just gonna put a number here that's really fast. So let's tame that off. There we go. Uh, there was also scroll delay. Um, and these sort of work together. Um, it's not like a delay in how long it takes to scroll. It's something else weird. And there's also like this true speed or something. I don't really understand them. I never use marquee, so I didn't really feel like wasting time trying to dive into it. Um, but yeah, just to say we could do it that way. Uh, of course, nowadays we can do the same thing. So I have my animations new, so we could just come in. Let's just save that. And I could just say animations new let's give that the background of purple a color of white like that um, and then this one's a little bit actually harder to do so one thing to do would be to do an overflow of hidden so we don't see the text as it's going right um, and actually I'm going to turn these two off for now so we can understand the animation I'm going to do on here because if we want it working like a marquee, it's surprisingly hard to do. Of course, we wouldn't. Nobody really wants marquee type stuff, or very rarely. But let's try and replicate this. Uh, so I do an at keyframes to use, and we can do mar, my new mar marquee for a nice long name. Uh, so zero percent. We don't need to do transforms anymore. We can just do a translate. Uh, the browser support's not perfect for this, so maybe be careful with it. Um, and let's just do translate. I'm going to do negative 50% now. It's not going to be enough, but it's just so we can actually see what's going to be happening. And then 100% would be a translate of, we'll say, 50%. So my animation's new. Uh, we can just put that on the paragraph. So animation's new, P, gets an animation of my new marquee and this is where it's nice because you actually get control on what you want to do so how long is it going to take if you want to delay you could put a delay on it uh, if you want easing functions we have easing functions uh, let's make this like 5000 because that was crazy fast and then of course if we want this one to loop we can just do an infinite here like that no e at the end um which doesn't is it with an e at the end there we go it is an e at the end um, so then the animation will keep on running. So now we can see what I'm actually trying to do. And let's also do it linear so it matches what we had before. And uh, maybe we slow it down a little bit more. So there we go. It's going like that. And then if we turn our overflow of hidden back on uh, and we can put our color white back on, you can get um, sort of the same thing. Oh, we have collapsing margin stuff happening. Let's not worry too much about that. Uh, and then here we could do this as like a negative 150 going up to a 150 or something. So it goes all way across it's probably shouldn't have used milliseconds for this but anyway you get the idea of what's happening here <laughs> we can sort of replicate that same thing depends on the size of the text and everything but there we go uh, I think there's actually something for like a modern day marquee um, like accessible and everything uh, that you can find a library out there somewhere now next up we're gonna look at how um, we used to do buttons then and now I'm gonna fail miserably at the old one because um, I haven't done this in so long but there's the fun thing here is we I'm gonna open up Photoshop uh, to do this because to make rounded corners on a button we had to slice things apart and get different pieces of an image to be able to actually do this and use a table of all things to actually make it work so here I have a, a button that I want I put the pink background here just to be like what if there was a background because usually you'd have like a full layout you might have stuff in the background um, but the important thing is first you need to slice things up and the important thing is to get these corners here um, and this is assuming you wanted round corners if you didn't want round corners it was much easier uh, but what we would do is grab our slice tool which who knows where that is uh, here we go uh, <laughs> it's right there under the crop tool we have a slice tool uh, which I think isn't used for anything anymore um, and I'll probably do a terrible job of slicing this up but basically you'd want to grab like the corners and get exactly what you needed for the corner and then you could slice like all the way to here you'd need to get this into like that and basically what I want is all the images that this would generate um, there we go do that and so I'm getting like all these regions like this and then I'd want to export it. Now I need the transparency behind here. Maybe there's a better way to do it. But if I remember correctly, you needed to make sure that the background on everything when you were exporting it was transparent. We do a save for web because that was a thing. Um, and then you would choose the slices that you actually needed. So because I don't remember how to do any of this, I'm going to select all of them <laughs> and it'd give me images. We can fix that after. 
Uh, so you choose all of them, but what's important is we need this to be a GIF. We couldn't do PNGs because I don't think IE um, supported PNG or transparency in PNG or something. So you'd use a GIF which supported transparency. Uh, and then you could hit save on that. And it's going to give me all those pieces, but because I don't know at all what I'm doing, um, I'm also going to switch this format to HTML and images. So I'm going to get a little bit of everything on here <laughs> and hit save. And then we're going to open that up. So give me one second. So here is the table that got exported from that. You can even see on here, we have a body with a BG color of a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, so I'm going to go and just grab this whole table that it has. We have the images and everything coming through on this. Uh, and I'm going to paste that in here. And I think it's going to work because I did copy the images over and it's completely broken, which I'm a little bit disappointed with. I thought it would just work perfectly, um, though it doesn't surprise me <laughs> that it's not working. Um, I'm terrible with buttons. I don't remember how they work. <laughs> um, some of it's, why does this have a height of 408 on it? I don't know. Um, the problem is I also don't know which image that is. Uh, <laughs> So I don't know where that's actually coming in on this table that's been generated. But the idea is you'd keep your corners. Um, so let's do this with our dev tools a little bit. It'd be a bit easier to work. Um, I think if you were using like Dreamweaver actually with everything, it wasn't so bad. For some reason, the heights on these are terrible, um, but whatever. Uh, I think it's because of the bigger table that actually got generated based on what I'm looking at now. Um, but here, like see here, I have the corner. I'd want to keep that. And then all these other ones, I don't really, you could have spacer GIFs actually that were like these blank images that would also help um, and stuff. But then like these ones, you don't actually need the image that would be in there. You just need the right height that's on here. And then you could do the BG color um, is purple. Uh, we probably need to have that in quotations. The color of it will be different, I think. Oh, BG color could be purple, but then we want to have the height on that. So it's the right height and et cetera, et cetera. Height would be equal to, was it 32 on the image? I don't know how big the image was. Um, that's not even working. Whatever, you'd get it all matching. So you could actually delete the one that had the text in it, but it set the background color on it. And then you could change the text in because you're actually putting in real text instead of having an image. And of course this would have to be clickable. Um, I don't even want to get into how we did it. I just know yeah, this is giving me like flashbacks that I don't want to remember. Um, so let's just come and get rid of this. And I, I brought in too big of a table and everything. So um, a bit of a disaster, but I, I don't want to work with tables because I don't have to anymore. Uh, so of course now we can just say button and then like click me and style it up in seconds with CSS, uh, right? We have our button and you'd have a class and other stuff with you know, whatever, you can make this a link to, but then you just do your font size, 48 pixels, whatever you need, put in a background, purple color, uh, let's do an RGB of 255, 255 over 0.677, there we go, we can sort of get that color, border zero, border radius, of course, is the whole point of all of this was the border radius, and then you can just come in with whatever border radius you need, and uh, some padding on there. And the nice thing with this, of course, is it's super easy to change. The text can be changed without any issues. If the text is longer, it doesn't cause any problems that could potentially happen with the other method. Um, 1M, 2M, just something really generic, but you get the idea, <laughs> um, right? And quickly come and make a button really easily. Then if you also wanted a hover effect, we just do a hover on our button and it's super easy. In the old days, it was just, then you know, we're doing like rollovers to change the images. Uh, so JavaScript would have to come in to change the images that were being used to have a rollover effect. Let, let's be thankful how easy things are with like border radius and all of that. Um, and if you remember actually when border radius became a thing, that was also the era of prefixes and prefixes were a nightmare for a long time that luckily we've moved past. Um, I'm super happy. That was like CSS3 became a thing and everything just had to be like seven prefixes on it. Um, those were not the fun. That's just because everyone sort of didn't do the proper implementation. They just wanted to get it working in their own browser. Things might be a little different. So the idea was that you can use it, but you need to prefix it so it works in our browser and eventually we'll drop the prefix, which thankfully for most things has happened. But yeah, I don't want to get too much into that. But the last thing I do want to look at is navigations. Um, and this goes, I mean, you could do a table-based layout for your navigation. Um, I don't like tables, clearly. Uh, so we're not going to get into them. Oh, and we have two closing. Is that going to work? Oh, man. One second. 
Um, let's just delete the button one. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we're not going to be doing a table based layout for a navigation. So when you wanted to have your nav, of course, we didn't even have really a nav tag. So you had your class of nav or navigation. And then in there, you might have your ul.nav list. And then in there, your li of uh, whatever, li times five with each one had a link. We'll just do a lorem one so we can just get something quick together here. Right, so you'd have something like that with your list, and then you'd have to come up and style that. And we'd have to do that today too. Um, so let's just come and say, first we'll start with my nav list and do um, just make it a bit smaller, font size of 1.25 rem or something um, to make it a bit more clear what's what we're going to be doing here. Uh, list style none. So so far nothing too fancy here. Um, padding zero, margin zero, the same sort of reset you'd normally do. But then we need all of them next to each other. And how do we do that? Well, we used to have to do like a nav list and then we choose our allies and do a float left. Uh, and of course, this is like more modern now. We're not using tables. We're actually using CSS for this. Um, and look, like it worked. They're all next to each other. And then you might say like, okay, margin right of one rem to space it out. You don't want this one to have it. So you, you know, add a little bit of CSS to take that margin off. We won't stress too much about that right now. Uh, but there we go, we get these items actually floating one next to each other. Now this does actually cause a problem though, because if I go back on my nav list itself, uh, or let's just go to my nav, and I give this a background of light blue, there's no background. What, what's going on? Well here, if I take off this float, the background's working, and as soon as I float, the background disappears. And uh, yeah, we had the fun days in the old days of having a clear fix to deal with this. Um, and it was using a pseudo element of after. And even because it was the old days, your pseudo elements back then um, had the single colon. So you probably were doing it with one, but we'll, no, we'll leave it like that, I guess. Uh, and then you have to have your content because it's a pseudo element. And then you'd have a display table. And I think it was display table for Internet Explorer. Um, don't ask me which version, but I'm pretty sure that's why it was a display table. And then you'd have a clear both. And what this did, I'm not gonna get into how floats work and the issues with them, but if you wanted to go below your floated items, you'd need to clear. So we're clearing all our floated items. And then the parent here would always have to have a clear fix on it. And then your background would come back. Oh, the fun days, of <laughs> that was never great. Um, and just any time you knew that the children would be floating, you'd throw a clear fix on the parent. Uh, and it was just what we had to do. <laughs> and uh, another issue actually with floats before we move to a modern look at this is what if I wanted to line this up on the other side? Well, we can't do a float right, because if you look at the word lorem right now, when I float that to the right, lorem actually goes all the way to that side, um, which is kind of annoying. Be just the way floats work, it takes the first item to the right and then the next and the next and the next. Um, the same way with left, it puts the first item on the left, then the next and the next and the next. Always a not very fun to deal with. Um, I think we might be able to say margin left of auto. No, that doesn't, oh, because it has the full width. Anyway, there was ways you could move it over. Of course, if you wanted to actually like center this navigation, we didn't have a float center as much as people wished we did. Um, so often, actually, it was very magic numbery. You'd get you know your width of the navigation, then mar set that as a width, and then margin left and margin right of auto. But then, if your navigation changed, the width you know the text inside changes. You add a new navigation item, the width of it changes, it breaks, and then you have to fix it, and it's all a bit of a nightmare. Whereas, of course, today this would basically stay the same. Uh, but then on my nav list dot nav list, we could just do a display of flex and then a gap of two rem and look at that it's working and <laughs> if i want it on the other side i just have to do my uh, align uh, justify content justify content of end and it moves to the other side or if i want it in the middle i do a center and it moves to the middle um, i could even space things out differently with uh, you know instead of center i could do space evenly or something so much control, so easy to play around with. So yeah, it's pretty amazing. And actually we went from having a time when we had to use HTML tags for everything, including styling your fonts and doing, you know, we have our, all these attributes to style stuff and just load it up. It probably worse than the div soup that we have today with our table-based layouts and everything. And it was just HTML like crazy. People today are actually taking it to the opposite extreme 
and making amazing CSS art without having any divs or any extra HTML. It's your HTML element, your body, and that is it. If you want to know what I'm talking about, there is a video right here for your viewing pleasure. And with that, I would like to thank my enablers of awesome, Jan, Johnny, Michael, Mr. Dave, Patrick, Simon, Stephen, and Tim, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.